Hey guys, how's it going? Been a long time since I made a video, and today I'm going to make a tutorial on how to set up a bucket server for Minecraft 1.8.7, I think the current version is, and beyond. Okay, this will work for every version of Bucket and Spigot that ever comes out, okay? So, if you're in the future watching this and you're like, oh my god, this is not from Minecraft 10.12.51, god, this guy's so fake, okay? It works for every version, you know, and if it doesn't work, then obviously I'll make a new video and stop updating this video. See that? Okay, so what you're gonna need is the following things. I'm gonna go to Spigot and support these guys for keeping the server alive. You know, big kudos to them. You know, if you wanna donate, feel free to donate down here. And yeah, big kudos to these for keeping the servers alive. Okay, next things next is you're going to need Java Development Kit 8. So download the version that represents your Windows, so x64, x86. But wait, which version do I need? Okay, so what we do, we just go to start down here, where it says my computer, this PC, or whatever else to get to your normal drive. What you can do is right click. Properties, and it'll tell you right there. I'm on an x64 bit system, you can see. So that means I'm on 64 bit. If it says uh, 32 bit and x86, then you're on x86, it means you're on 32 bit. So download the version that represents your Windows. It might take a while depending on the internet, so just let me do it. Okay, so we just downloaded that and installed it. Next thing you need is Git. This will be in the li links will be in the description, don't worry. So what you can do is download Git. Bash the next button, install. Install it as normal, don't change it in the options, don't mess around with anything you don't know, okay? Pretty simple. So once that's done, what you want to do is go to start down here, and then in the search bar for the programs, you want to type in git. So what will come up is git bash and git gui. Git bash, what you want to do, click on it, properties, compatibility, and then check, make sure this program runs as an admin. I had an issue where if I didn't run it as an admin, it wouldn't work, so... Yeah, we just got to make sure it works, so make sure it runs as admin so we have less issues later on. Next thing you need is build tools. To get to build tools, what you want to do is go to Spigot and then just click on downloads. Okay, let's take it to build tools. So just click download, go to your desktop or wherever you're doing, making the server. Okay, that's all the downloads we need. Build tools, go around there. Okay, so we're going to need a folder for all this shit. So a new folder, and we'll call it come because I've recorded this video another six times now and it's annoying me because my cat just won't shut up. Okay, so I'm gonna do is put your build tools in there. Open it up, right click, new, and new text document. Don't need to name it anything, it's gonna get deleted afterwards. Okay, so what we wanna do is open it up the text document. And in the description there'll be these codes, okay? This refers to which version of Windows you have. So if you have 32-bit, you'll want this code. If you're from 64 bit, you'll want this code. They will be in the description. Okay, but Java JDK may be subject to change, okay? So what you want to do is to check see if it's changed, go to your C drive. Go to where your Java normally would be installed. So as you can see I'm on 64 bit, so I'm on C program files. And then when I look for Java, where the hell Java is? Java. And then it'll say there the version number. So JDK, yours might say 1.8.0 underscore 47 or something. So what we do is just obviously change that so it matches that file location. So I want to match that basically. Okay, so that's if there's any issues later on if you're watching this in the future. So what we do is copy that entire code and paste it in the new text document. Now this is the important part, you want to file, save as, and you want to save it as update or whatever you want to call it dot sh you must have the dot sh or it will not work okay save so once it's saved you should get something that looks like this it should be the file type should be a shell script and once that's done what you want to do is run it might ask for admin rights so now this is actually going to take a while so i'm going to fast forward the video so just let it download you know, depending on your internet and how fast your hard drive is, it will take a while, okay? So just let it go. Don't start singing for other people. It's not good. Okay, and we're back. As you can see, the command prompt style thing has actually gone, and now we've got some new files in here. We have uh, Spigot, Craft Bucket, and all the other files. So, alright, let's keep things neat, okay? We'll go to new, new folder. We'll create two new folders. Spigot. Spigot. Server, if I spell. Spigot server, and we'll create 
Hey, craft bucket server. Craft bucket server. Okay, so now you want to choose which one you want to go for. So I'm just going to put these on my desktop, just for simplicity. So you choose which one you want. So I'm, I'm old school. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. So I'm going to go for craft bucket. So what we're going to do is rename it to craft bucket. And then for you spigot users, what we want to do is rename it to spigot. Pretty simple. So drag the, drag the respected jars into their own folder. So spigot goes in spigot, craft bucket is in craft bucket. Alright, so now we have craft bucket and spigot. So what we're going to do is open up these new folders and then create a new text document again. You're not going to save it, so don't name it. So now you're going to need the codes. It's as simple as last time as it used to be, long before Spigot and everything was well known. It's the same code, so what we're going to do, codes are going to be in the description, so what we're going to do is copy and paste it in, file, save as. This is the important part, so I'm going to call this one craft bucket. Now this is the important part, name it dot bat, dot bat, batch file. So it's got to be a batch file, if it's not a batch file, it will not work. So save. So as you can see, we've got a batch file there for craft bucket. So now we don't technically need this text document anymore. Okay. And then for people who want to do spigot, same thing. New, new text document, open it up. And then obviously you want the spigot code. Okay, so that file, same as spigot dot that. Make sure it's a batch file. If it's not a batch file, it won't work. Okay, so now what we want to do is respectively run them once, okay? So, I'm going to run to craft bucket first. Just because it'll say it was doing something, and then it will give you an error. It will say, you know, cannot create the files and everything, stopping server, okay? What you need to do is uh, agree to the end user license agreement, so the ELA. What we're going to do, we've got the ELA, change that to true, okay? So, you know, you want to agree to it, you know, make sure you read it all, you know, by clicking on the link, and then save. Once it's saved, run the server again. As you can see here, let me hit run. And then, as you can see, it'll start creating the world and everything. So to prove that this server actually works, I'm going to log in to my Minecraft. Put that up here. Okay, play online, it's updated, 1.8.7. And now we wait, play the waiting game. Okay, and then multiplayer, and then I need to delete like half of these. So what we're going to do is to join your own server, is call it whatever you want, so I'm going to call it bucket slash spigot, so we don't get confused here. And then you want to put your IPv4, or you want to type localhost, I wonder if that actually still works. Yep, there we go, localhost. So now this is how you connect to your own server. What did spigot, there it is. Spigot and bucket. So what I do is join your own server. And you can see over here, in the corner, I have connected and I've spawned in the water. Oh, that's been a long time since I played Minecraft. So you can see, spawned in the water and. Oh, this is the reason I have Holy oh, shit. <laughs> okay, I'm actually save this world. So yeah, that's it. Minecraft bucket is working. You know, I can alt myself. Or, you know, okay. As you can see, I can alt myself and then, you know. Not alt me. Oh, I spelled my own name wrong. Nah, my other way. I spelled myself right. Zaps. 2k. And then obviously your bucket plugin will work, but you know, you decide to put in. So, um, yep. Yeah. Slash game mode. One. Is it? There we go. Doing see, I'm in creative mode. Kind of like that. Right. Now, if you use spigot users, so disconnect from that. And stop your server. Stop. Now, same thing. For spigot users, what we're going to do is open it up, run the spigot.bat, let it create its stuff, and then obviously I'll say the EULA again, so close that, and then EULA, open it, change it to true, save, and then rerun the server. And then obviously I'll create all the files, there we go. See, now spigot has some extra features in it. Okay. I'm not too keen on the extra features because I'm more of a vanilla type of guy, but you know, you might like them, so each to their own, you know, that's how it works. And as you can see, it'll create all the files and everything, you know, the plugins folder, stuff like that. So yeah, let's create all the folders. So what I do is refresh. As you can see, Spig and Bucket's up. 
and then we join. And you can see here we have joined. Oh, let's stop doing that. So yeah, look at that. We're back in the game. Okay. Same as before. Alt zaps to get eight. See, and then uh, slash game mode. There we go. So I'm in creative now, as you can see. So that's it guys, that is how to set up a server. If you want your friends to connect, you are going to need to A, port forward, and then give your friends your external IP, or B, do you want to use Hamachia? And there are tutorials, all of you know how to do those. I would teach you how to port forward, but every router is different. It's router, router, every one of them is different. Mine is very straightforward, yours could be very, very more advanced, and you know, you'll get confused. So, you know, each to their own. And that pretty much sums it up, guys. So, if this story has helped you, please drop a like and share with your friends. And if you want future updates, then please subscribe to my channel. So, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you a lot. If you have any problems, comment in the description. I'll try to help my best. If I can't help, then head over to the Spigot forums and ask there, because obviously they'll give you the better advice, because it's their server, they know what they're doing. So anyway, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.